In the early hours of this Sunday, November 16th, Sakurajima volcano generated three major eruptions in southwestern Japan. Sakurajima, one of the most feared volcanic titans of the Japanese archipelago, erupted violently launching a tower of ash and superheated gases that reached 13,000 feet, 4,000 meters, in altitude, a height equivalent to approximately 12 times the Eiffel Tower stacked vertically. This brutal demonstration of geological force resulted in the immediate cancellation of dozens of flight operations and placed thousands of residents on maximum alert. What we witnessed was not an isolated event, but rather a coordinated sequence of eruptions that transformed the morning sky into an apocalyptic scene of ash and darkness. Strategically located on the island of Kyushu, birthplace of one of the most volcanically active regions on the planet, Sakurajima rises as an imposing monument to the tectonic instability that characterizes the Pacific Ring of Fire. This mountain of fire, situated just a few miles from the densely populated city of Kagoshima, represents simultaneously a fascinating tourist attraction and a constant threat to more than 600,000 people who inhabit its vicinity. The unique geography of this region places the volcano in a position where its eruptions directly impact crucial air routes, urban infrastructure, and the daily lives of entire communities that have learned to coexist with this explosive neighbor. The Japan Meteorological Agency, responsible for continuous monitoring of all active volcanoes in the archipelago, recorded that the first detonation occurred during the dark hours of dawn, catching many residents still in their homes. Approximately 120 minutes after this initial explosion, Sakurajima roared again with equal intensity, dumping additional tons of pyroclastic material into the atmosphere. This pattern of multiple eruptions in rapid sequence indicates that the underlying magmatic system was under extreme pressure releasing accumulated energy through successive events that kept authorities and scientists in a heightened state of vigilance throughout the entire period. The immediate impact on commercial aviation was devastating and relentless. Kagoshima Airport, a fundamental hub for domestic and international connections in southern Japan, found itself forced to cancel approximately 30 landing and takeoff operations. Microscopic particles of volcanic ash, when inhaled by aircraft jet engines, can melt and solidify again in critical components, causing catastrophic failures in mid-flight. This technical reality transformed what might seem like a mere inconvenience into a first-magnitude aviation safety issue, forcing airlines to prioritize the protection of passengers and crews above commercial or schedule considerations. The magnitude of this eruption gains additional significance when historically contextualized. According to meticulous records maintained by Japanese authorities, this was the first occasion in approximately 13 months that an eruptive column from Sakurajima exceeded the mark of 13,000 feet, 4,000 meters, in altitude. This break from a relatively quiet activity pattern suggests that significant changes may be occurring in the depths of the volcanic system, possibly indicating a new cycle of intensified activity that will demand even more rigorous monitoring in the coming months. The trajectory followed by the immense ash cloud after the eruptions became an object of immediate concern for meteorologists and civil defense authorities throughout the region. Propelled by prevailing high-altitude winds, the massive volcanic particles began an inexorable displacement toward the northeast, moving away from the eruptive epicenter but dangerously approaching densely populated urban areas. This dispersion route placed at direct risk not only the city of Kagoshima, already accustomed to the whims of its volcanic neighbor, but also vast portions of the adjacent province of Miyazaki, where communities less accustomed to dealing with ash precipitation would face considerable logistical and public health challenges. The fall of volcanic ash over inhabited areas triggers a cascade of practical problems that go far beyond aesthetic inconvenience. When these microscopic particles settle on urban surfaces, they transform streets into slippery and dangerous lanes, obstruct storm drainage systems causing localized flooding, contaminate drinking water reservoirs, and create significant respiratory risks for vulnerable populations, including children, the elderly, and people with pre-existing pulmonary conditions. Local authorities needed to quickly mobilize cleaning teams, distribute respiratory protection masks, and issue detailed guidance for residents to minimize outdoor exposure during the critical period of volcanic material precipitation. The economic impacts of the eruption began to materialize almost immediately after the first explosive events. Beyond the canceled flights that left hundreds of passengers unable to fulfill their itineraries, commercial establishments in areas affected by ash fall found themselves obliged to temporarily close operations to protect sensitive equipment and ensure the safety of employees and customers. 
Regional farmers, particularly those dedicated to cultivating tea and other high-value agricultural products characteristic of Kyushu, faced the prospect of significant losses if their plantations were covered by thick layers of abrasive ash that could damage delicate foliage and compromise entire harvests scheduled for subsequent weeks. The coordinated response of Japanese authorities demonstrated decades of accumulated experience in volcanic crisis management. Early warning systems transmitted automatic notifications to mobile devices of all residents in potentially affected areas, providing clear instructions on preventive measures and evacuation routes should the situation deteriorate. Emergency shelters were preventively prepared in strategic locations, equipped with essential supplies including drinking water, non-perishable foods, basic medical equipment, and respiratory masks in sufficient quantities to accommodate thousands of people for extended periods should the need for mass evacuations materialize. Volcanology experts mobilized by the Japan Meteorological Agency intensified continuous monitoring of Sakurajima using a sophisticated network of scientific instruments. High sensitivity seismographs recorded every tremor and vibration emanating from the mountain's bowels, detecting patterns that could herald new eruptions. Inclinometers measured microscopic deformations in the volcanic cone that would indicate subsurface magma movement. Thermal cameras tracked temperature variations in fumaroles and active craters. Spectrometers analyzed chemical compositions of expelled gases seeking changes that would signal alterations in deep magmatic dynamics. This technological arsenal provided scientists with an unprecedented window into the interior of the volcanic system, allowing continuously updated risk assessments. To fully understand the magnitude and significance of the events of November 16th, it becomes essential to position Sakurajima within its broader historical context as one of the most chronically active and closely watched volcanoes on the planet.